I know some things in this video are going to sound a bit silly, but I promise you if you stick around to the end, you'll see why this is actually incredibly important stuff. LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga has been out for a bit now, and a lot has been said about the breadth of gameplay opportunities and fun retellings of all six mainline films, plus the three recent fan-made spin-offs. But one aspect only some reviewers have touched on is the unintended downsides of the new character class system. Unlike the previous LEGO Star Wars games where characters were loosely assigned categories by their main unique ability, here they are assigned a class and given a set of shared abilities and traits, or are put in the miscellaneous bin. This works out most of the time, but it unfortunately leads to abilities in the films being ignored, and to homogenization, a sameness quality to characters that should otherwise be unique. The most popular example to bring up is the astromech droids lacking the ability to hover, as seen in the films and all previous LEGO games. But other characters are affected too. Probe droids can double jump for some reason. Chewbacca has the same melee power as Rose Tico. Jar Jar can't use his tongue to grab people or things from a distance. Of course, not all is lost. The extra category holds up decently. Joydicas maintain their top tier mobility, for example. But overall, it's a downgrade in uniqueness from previous games. But there is one ability TT Games absolutely had to include in spite of the new class system, or the entire game would have been ruined. And its implementation is so baffling, so insulting, that once I first used it, I knew I had to talk about it. I'm of course talking about the jetpack. With characters from the movies like Django, Boba, and the First Order Jet Troopers all prominently featuring their jetpacks, TT Games was obligated to let us use them too. If they went the astromech route, people would have boycotted. But just look how they massacred my boy. The jetpack is a soulless, rotting corpse, forsaken apparently out of some callous and needless fear of broken open world level design. It has the same mobility as walking speed in a game where sprinting all over the place is basically required due to the sheer scale of everything. That means arguments about the previous game's jetpack speed being the same as walking speed don't hold up because those games don't have vast open worlds to traverse. Compare the speed instead to other Star Wars games with jetpacks. Now that's more like it. Aside from speed, the duration is pathetic. Just a couple seconds, and you don't even get to indefinitely hover in place like in previous LEGO games. Also, you can't use them to get vertical height at all. Of course, the previous LEGO games didn't have this either, so it wasn't expected, but it would have been a nice and appreciated touch. Speed and duration combined to the effect that jetpacks are near useless throughout the game. I only remember using them specifically two times, here to get across a gap on Crate, and to give me extra security on this platforming bit on Jakku. I've finished all main missions, side missions, puzzles, and challenges, and jetpacks only helped out two times. That's just sad. And it's not for lack of looking. I used the First Order Jet Trooper to complete most tasks because of his overpowered rocket launcher that one hits most enemies in breakables. So if a jetpack would have helped, I would have noticed. Why? Why do this to my dear jetpack? The one I used so much in the complete saga to get over all sorts of gaps, like this one, or this one. And with the added sin of removing the hover from astromech droids, it seems TT Games all but hates any form of personal airborne technology. There is the obvious game design element to consider. With the open world nature of the game, perhaps TT Games felt the inclusion of character flight would trivialize certain puzzles in unforeseeable ways. to fly to a strategically placed cyber mix, so players must engage in the world as we intended. But no, that doesn't really make sense to me. See, there are plenty of other abilities that can break the supposedly perfectly crafted puzzles across the galaxy. The most obvious is force lifting your second player to higher locations. This in effect is a force jetpack just slower and lamer. There's also the jumping grapple move, Skyrim horsing up rough terrain, and of course the exploit known as Child Flight, allowing you to go as high as you want. So if TT Games specifically neutered jetpacks to maintain their carefully crafted world of puzzles, they did a bad job. So that got me thinking about an alternative explanation, one that maintained continuity with the previous LEGO games, which basically had the same style of jetpack. Again, not a problem for them because of different game designs, but while also looking to other Star Wars games with fully realized, powerful, useful jetpacks. In the LEGO world, people are seemingly made out of the same material as their storage containers, walls, vehicles, even sometimes dirt. That is, LEGO bricks. They may have different colors and shapes, but the material is the same. We know this because characters fall apart into their constituent pieces, and each piece has LEGO printed on it. We can therefore assume that each character's weapons, accessories, and accoutrements are all LEGO too, unless otherwise shown, as is the case with flowing, wavy capes that are clearly a different material. 
In the real world, Lego bricks are made of a thermoplastic terpolymer. Thermo meaning heat, plastic from the Greek plastikos, moldable, ter relating to three, and polymer, a chain of bonded chemical units, those being acrylonitrile, 1,3-butadiene, and styrene, or ABS for short, cross-linked together to form a tough, shelf-stable plastic which gives Lego its characteristic high-quality sturdiness. I wanted to be sure of what I read on the internet, and that calls for an experiment. An easy one anyone at home can do is a density test. ABS has a known density of 1 to 1.05 grams per centimeter cubed. If bricks are made of ABS, they should just barely sink in water since they have a higher density. And that's what we see. Every brick tested sinks but two. By adding salt a bit at a time, we can steadily increase the density of the water until bricks start floating. Sequentially, certain bricks begin to float, likely due to the dyes having varying densities, until all but two were left. Turns out, certain bricks, the more bendable ones like these, are made of polycarbonate, which is much denser than ABS. But, at least we gained some confidence that the other bricks are made of ABS, as the final density of the salt water was 1.06 grams per centimeter cubed, just above the expected value. That's all well and good. We now know that some bricks' materials are slightly different than others, though they're close enough that any differences really shouldn't matter. We can assume that this material uniformity holds true for the LEGO world as well, but we still have no idea what the in-universe LEGO bricks are made of. These bricks are regularly seen exposed to temperatures well above the melting range of ABS, not to mention they're capable of sentience, something no real LEGO brick has demonstrated so far. These in-game bricks could be made of almost anything. Contrast this with jetpacks and other Star Wars games clearly made out of a different material than LEGO bricks. See, no LEGO logo to be found. To get to the bottom of why jetpacks may perform so poorly in a LEGO game specifically, I needed someone more qualified than me to explain the complex intersection of materials chemistry, rocketry, and microscale engineering. There was no one better I could talk to than Werner Francis Mark, who is in his seventh year as a NASA researcher at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and, coincidentally, my freshman roommate at UT Austin. First, I told him about my 1 million subscriber YouTube channel. He then complimented my interview setup. Oh, really like what you got going on here, dude. The iPhone 13 camera, the Blue Yeti mic, real professional stuff. Glad to see you're doing good outside of college. Thanks. Best of luck to you as well. Werner, I know you have some questionable history in Germany, but why have you decided to vote against the Civil Rights Act of 1964? I think, I think you got the wrong question there, my guy. That was my grandfather. Ah, right, right. So why do you think a fully functioning jetpack would be difficult to make in a purely Lego world? Uh, I thought I was here for uh, the NASA outreach community programs that we have, not these silly questions that I wasn't prepared for, so. Well, buddy, uh, I'd imagine they would struggle with jetpacks because they're so complicated. After a fruitful conversation with a leading expert in the field, I felt comfortable making definitive conclusions about the LEGO Skywalker Saga jetpacks. The most important thing to know is that jetpacks are functionally a lot like rockets, and rockets are quite simple in theory. All you need to start off is the ideal rocket equation, which states that the acceleration of the rocket is equal to the exhaust speed out of the back times some bit we don't really care about. This equation is saying that the thrust of the jetpack is proportional to the speed of the exhaust. If you look real closely at Django's or Boba's jetpacks, you will see a tapered part of the tubing right before the opening. This is called a throat or choke. This tells us that the rocket equation applies to the LEGO universe, because this kind of tubing, known as a De Laval nozzle, is also used on our rockets. It exploits, among other things, the Bernoulli effect, which states that as the pressure of a fluid drops, its velocity increases, or vice versa. Bingo! An increase in exhaust speed with one simple trick. The first order jetpacks do not show this tapering, but it easily could be present in the interior. Another important thing to note is that other LEGO objects superficially similar to jetpacks work as expected in the game. Spaceships large and small fly and float around just like they do in the movies, meaning there isn't some underlying problem with the LEGO material of this universe, like Melting Point, that would make all rockets impossible. But let's see if you can spot the difference. Here's a jetpack. Here's a ship. Well, the closest ship-like thing to a jetpack I could find, the Micro Tantive 4 escape pod. Notice anything? Good. The jetpack is significantly smaller, and that makes sense. It has to be small enough to fit on someone's back. This leads me to only one conclusion. 
The material makeup of this universe's LEGO bricks fundamentally lacks some property which would allow for effective miniaturization of rocket technology. This could be toughness, heat conductivity, abrasion sensitivity. It's hard to tell without further testing. But the facts are undeniable. This world is incapable of producing viable, man-portable rockets for effective speed, long-range traversal, or verticality with access to the same basic designs of perfectly good jetpacks made of a different, non-LEGO material. Perhaps the LEGO world engineers just can't yet make nozzle throats small enough for efficient fluid expansion. Now, I can hear the counter-argument that jetpacks in the pre-rendered cutscenes and for certain scripted enemy encounters seem to function just like in the movies. So it can't be that the LEGO Star Wars universe is incapable of making powerful jetpacks, right? To this, may I remind you that these are pre-rendered and scripted scenarios. They do not represent the lived experiences of the typical LEGO person. Because jetpacks only work properly during certain highly controlled moments, but not when full freedom is given to the player, we cannot trust these scripted depictions to accurately represent what LEGO jetpacks are capable of. These situations could easily be fabricated. Perhaps strings or some other mechanism is involved. So, is there any hope left for this universe to have true, fully functioning jetpacks? I do propose a solution. As shown with the Big Head Extra, LEGO organisms in this universe are able to drastically change size and still function normally. If everyone would agree to increase their size by, say, a factor of three, everything else could also be scaled up to match, meaning no overall detectable change. As noted, the main problem with jetpacks is their small size, so if they were able to be three times bigger, then they would function just as well as the escape pod, which is capable of interplanetary travel. Of course, that's overkill for a jetpack, but it demonstrates that there would no longer be any excuse for the incredibly poor performance of these jetpacks. Now getting everyone on board with this 3 times size increase would be difficult, at first, but over time people would come to understand the gravity of this situation and just how better off they would be with jetpacks that don't suck. Thank you for your careful consideration, and please, moving forward, for the good of the galaxy, turn on the big head extra as soon as you're able. I believe a grassroots movement is the best way to get people to accept our 3 times size increase initiative. Good luck out there.